All right, welcome back to part two of how to Cerakote at home. In this segment, we're going to be finishing uh, the Cerakote job on this knife that we started in part one. If you missed part one, go ahead and click here and uh, you can uh, watch that segment as well. In this segment, we're going to be mixing up the Cerakote, spraying it and curing it, as well as a little bit of cleanup. So let's get going with that. And before we do, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks. All right, the parts are in the spray cabinet, cooling off. We're going to get ready to mix up some Cerakote. I've got a small container of the H267 Magpul FDE or Magpul Flat Dark Earth. And we're going to shake this. You're going to shake this for a minute. And um, when you think you've shaken it enough, you're going to shake it a little bit more. <laughs> it's uh, There's a lot of suspended solid particles in Cerakote that are part of the, uh, the coating process. So you want to make sure that you're a Cerakote is uh, properly mixed. There's a couple of different ratios you can use when mixing up the uh, hardener to the uh, paint. 24 to 1 is going to give you a matte finish. 18 to 1 is going to give you a satin finish. And uh, 12 to 1 is going to give you a semi-gloss. I prefer the satin finish. That's worked out pretty well on everything that I've Cerakoted in the past. So that's what I'll be doing. Um, I'll be using a graduated cylinder um to measure the appropriate amounts uh, that i'll need for 19 to 1. i'm still shaking i've changed gloves because the uh, other gloves are synthetic and they won't stand up to acetone uh, these are nitrile and they, they will for a period of time at least so i'm still shaking now i'm going to mix up six mls of uh the, this fluid so that's going to be 5.7 ml of the uh, base color and 0.3 ml of the uh hardener and that'll give me a uh uh, 19 to 1 ratio. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to show you what I do here. So I want 5, 7. This is the bad part because once it coats the side of the glass, you really can't tell what you're doing. So I've got the hardener right here. I'm going to use little mini syringe to measure up 0.3 mls cap is nice but I'm not going to use the entire thing so let me draw 0.3 I'm putting the hardener in there I'm going to use this plug this is a silicone plug you can use these to plug barrels as well and we're going to shake it up now this has a pot life of two hours. You want to only mix up what you'll use in a two hour period. We want to mix this up really good. And I've got this little beaker and I have a screen, 100 uh, micron screen. I guess that's what it stands for. That's what they call for, for the H series. All right, so dropping that in there. And I'm pouring that through the screen. Any solids that made it through are going to be caught in that screen. I'm going to put the top back on the hardener. And of course, this probably won't be enough. But that's usually the case. Is trying to gauge how much you need is a, a challenge. I'm dropping this in the acetone. And I'm going to now go over to the spray cabinet. This is a uh, Master Airbrush Model G33, and um, I've used this before. It does the job. I'm going to change the bowl, put a little a slightly bigger uh, bowl on it. But um, relatively inexpensive. I'll have a link to them below if you're interested in getting one. I've done most of my circo with this airbrush, to be honest with you, even large pieces, and I'm quite happy with the way it operates. It does use the 0.8 millimeter tip. Um, the uh, circo wants you to use a larger tip. They do have larger guns for that but uh this has worked for me so far so this is what i'll continue to use um the uh breathing protection uh organic cartridges should work fine and i've also got this little setup with an air compressor uh fitting um a regulator which is set to 20 and uh, that gives me the uh, pattern i want um uh dryer and then a connection to the air hose so um, this is what I'll be using. Now I'm going to give you a close-up and without turning the uh, 
exhaust on or anything else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one knife blade. I'm not going to have the uh, breathing protection on. I'm also not going to have the exhaust on, but I just want to be able to talk to you and show you exactly what I'm doing. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to spray a pattern on the uh, back of the wall, the uh, craft paper that I have up there, so that I can ensure that I got the pattern that I want out of the gun. If I need to make any adjustments in the flow or air pressure, I'll do it then. All right, I've got the uh, larger cup on here. I'm going to pour some into that cup, do some test sprays, make sure I'm happy with what I'm getting. That looks good. So the first thing I'm going to do is this knife. And uh, let me give you a close-up. So what I'm going to be doing here is uh, basically getting a nice even coat on there. Make sure it's not dry. It should appear wet. You don't want a dry spray. And you'll know what a dry spray is because it has a pebbly appearance. I'm going to adjust this and give me a little bit more flow. It may be hard to tell. We have a uniformly wet appearance. There's no dry spots on there. You're looking at one micron finish. Now I'm going to stick this in the oven. All right, so I demonstrated that one. I'm going to put on breathing protection now, turn on the exhaust fan, and I'm going to uh, go ahead and set coat the rest of the stuff. I have a feeling I didn't mix up enough, but we'll find out as I go along. So I can't emphasize enough that breathing protection is extremely important. Even that few minutes that I had when I wasn't wearing it spraying, I could feel it, that it was affecting me. Um, I only did it because I wanted to be able to talk to explain what I was doing. Anyway, um, clean up time because if you don't clean the stuff up, it's going to gum up. Airbrushes are expensive. Even the Pyrex class is expensive. So what I've been doing as I go along, as I use these things, I dip them in uh, acetone. So let's go over to the bench and uh, show you what cleanup looks like. All right, let's get everything cleaned up. Um, it is 12 o'clock. I've got those things in the oven and they should uh, be there for two hours at 250. Now what I'll do is I've got this one container, pretty much a throwaway uh, acetone. And then I've got this one, which is a cleaner acetone. And I use this um, to give everything a final wipe down. Um, you really want to make sure you get all the old stuff off because if you don't uh, you're just gonna have dirty stuff and I know my workshops a mess but uh, uh, when it comes to painting supplies I absolutely want to make sure I'm clean now what I'll do with the uh, airbrush I will completely take it apart and um, put the parts in acetone let them soak and we'll give that a dunk in there. Um, now, as I clean these pieces, what I'll do, I'll give them a wipe down with uh, this rag. With, it's got some of the dirty acetone. I'll put them in the container with the clean acetone. Kind of a two-step cleaning process. But it does preserve your equipment. And uh, keeps you from having to spend the money on replacing stuff. All right, it's been two hours, 250 degrees. I've already turned the oven off, so I'm going to get the, get these guys out. And we're going to let them cool down. 
All right, these things have had a chance to cool down. Let's take a look at them. Here's uh, that knife. Kind of hard to see, but the, you can see the surface is uh, pretty much flat colored. Um, it's come out pretty nice. I'm pretty happy with the way this has come out. And uh, this is this knife is not going to rust. All right, so we finished the Cerakote. And I'm really pleased with the results. Uh, here's just one knife. Uh, I'll give you a close-up in a moment to show you exactly what you can do uh, with Cerakote. So here's the knife. Um, I've actually assembled it so that you can see uh, what it looks like. You can have a couple of different colors with these knives with the tangs. Um, goes right into the case. Uh, here's the other knife. I haven't assembled it yet. Here's a knife that I did, and I wanted to show you this one. It's done in red and black Cerakote, and um, uh, you can do some stencil designs with Cerakote. I'm probably going to do another video on doing stencil designs. Uh, this one has the shark. It also has a logo of a company that I was uh, running, Conquistador Sports. Of course, that's a little Conquistador. This knife is four years old. It's been in and out of salt water, fresh water plenty of times. There's no sign of corrosion on it at all. This is not a sticker, by the way. This is all Cerakote. So I'm really pleased with this one. I'm a big fan of Cerakote. I think the baking process does a lot to make it a, a sturdy and, and a durable material or finish. But um, you can Cerakote at home and I just showed you how. Hopefully you'll get something out of this video. If you have, hit share, like, and more importantly, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.